lot of people make the mistake of focusing their social or digital on themselves all the time. It's all about their, what they're eating, what they're doing, their point of view, their perspective. I find if I make social about other people, a tagging or asking other people for their opinion, people like that. They like to participate. Welcome to Tech You Should Know with Kim Commando. Insider secrets to protecting yourself online, making money from home, securing your devices, avoiding scams, and much more. We're really excited to have Evan Kirstel with us today. Evan is a business-to-business thought leader and top technology influencer with a social media following of hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, he works with brands like AT&T, Samsung, Panasonic, and Qualcomm and helps them achieve what he calls social media visibility. And let's face it, these days it's all about social media, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, or all the others. How can you promote yourself or your brand using social media? This podcast should be listened to every small business owner across America. It is that good. We'll actually hear from a small business owner whose business is dwindling and he needs a way to start marketing online. Kim and Evan also talk about Reddit, Facebook, and the top three things you need to do to promote yourself or business on social media. And a quick reminder, this is not the Kim Commando Show. Every week, of course, Kim gives you the very best tips, DIYs, if you take your questions, if we've got tech news. It's all on the Kim Commando Show, and that is available as a podcast. And you can only get that in one place, which is getkim.com. Check it out right now while you're listening to this, getkim.com. Dot com and stay right there. Up next, it's Kim's conversation with Evan Kirstel on Tech You Should Know. Hey, a quick reminder, if you have a question about something digital, you can get unbiased tech advice, of course, that you can trust from America's digital goddess. It's Kim Commando. Go to commando.com, K-O-M-A-N-D-O.com. In the upper right-hand corner, just click on Be a Caller where we'll ask you a couple of questions uh, about what you need advice on. And a producer will reach out and get in touch with you to set you up with a call on the show. We appreciate that. And here now, it's Kim's conversation with social media expert Evan Kirstel on Commando On Demand. So, Evan, I was introduced to you on Twitter. You were one of my recommended followers. No kidding. Well, I have to thank Jack or someone for that. <laughs> Somebody at Twitter, because the algorithm actually worked. Because, and then I started actually looking at what you were tweeting out. And I thought, you know, this is really some great stuff. How many times a day do you put a post on Twitter? Uh, it's every day, all day, 24-7. I schedule, I curate content. And then on top of that, I go in and engage and document what I'm doing and and live tweet. So it really is uh, social for me is around the clock. Not that I'd suggest that's a normal life, healthy lifestyle for anyone out there. And how many followers do you have? It's about 280,000 on Twitter. And I, I put as much effort into LinkedIn and Instagram and Reddit and Quora. And so for me, Twitter is just another platform. And I think uh, people are always talking about one versus the other, you know, Facebook versus this versus that. And for me, all these platforms are equally interesting. They have very distinct and different communities and and styles. And so I like to dabble in each of them. So which one do you think is more effective for business owners? You know, I think LinkedIn is the new media platform. Microsoft has done a great job of, of kind of nurturing and leaving LinkedIn alone and turning it into, you know, essentially a Rolodex of the enterprise tech world. See, one of the things that I always get a kick out of when I'm on LinkedIn is that somebody will give me an endorsement for like broadcasting. <laughs> and I'm like, and so I always joke and I'll say, yes, gosh, thank you so much for that. Validation is a nice thing. But in reality, LinkedIn is a media platform now. You can publish there, you can live stream, you can network. It doesn't have the bot and the uh, bad actor issue that Facebook and, and Twitter have because they've really locked down the platform. So it's a much more uh, genuine community. You get real comments and engagement. So um, it's kind of my go-to destination now. Well, we are have an opening for a digital marketing manager. And I posted that up on LinkedIn to say, hey, you know, if you know anybody? And I did the hashtags and did stuff like that. And it was really interesting to me, the feedback that we got back. Because people were saying, oh, you know, this is a great place to work and Kim's great and you should apply. And it really helped, I guess, stir the pot a little bit to get some interest in this position. 
Yeah, and it's it's been known as a recruiting and a job search platform forever, right? I mean, that was one of the original drivers of LinkedIn. But it's become this uh, amazing destination for marketeers, for salespeople, for networkers, for for content. And How much is the premium subscription now? It's about uh, – there's, there's a range. I pay about 100 bucks a month, and I get a bunch of benefits, you know, a bunch of options. The value is in the data, though. The, the value is in the, the data that LinkedIn holds, which is who's who in the tech world. I mean, people have – their complete bios and their networks and their uh, increasingly their content there. And it's searchable and it, you, you have hashtags, you have keyword search, you can search by zip code on titles. And, you know, so it really is, be, has become the, the database of the business world. And, Not, and it seems like everybody has a profile. Everyone has a profile and, um, you, you know, it's no longer about finding someone in the old days of sales and you've been in sales. Right. Okay. It was all about finding the person, you know, the cold call, the opening. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to find the person. Now you have to have something to say and you have to have a reason why you want to have a discussion or a chat or a sales meeting. And, you know, in the messages, I think that works, the LinkedIn messaging, because now you don't need to have their phone number, right? You can just go ahead and drop them a note there. You know, you met Daz Smith, our executive producer, yes. and he's in charge of all things video here, The the primarily right now, the Bloomberg television show. And we actually found him on LinkedIn. We put the ad out, said we're looking for an executive producer. We had people apply from all over the country. And then I said, you know, who can we find locally that we know? And Phoenix, you've seen Phoenix. It's a big town, but it's actually a small town, probably like Boston. I mean, it seems like a big community, but when you get into it, everybody kind of knows each other. Right. And we actually found Daz by poaching him. And saying, we know that you're at right this minute right now, but we think you'd be better off right now with us. And so he came over, we interviewed, and as a matter of fact, he was looking for a change. Well, in a world of really, you know, talent-driven hiring and unique skills and skill sets, there aren't people out there waiting, you know, for the call from a recruiter. And anyone who's dealt with recruiters and hiring and HR managers knows how much of a nightmare that whole process is. is. So. You know, social is about person-to-person communication. If you're looking to get hired or to hire someone, all of a sudden it's a one-on-one kind of relationship you you can build through these social networks. And, you know, part of the beauty of all these platforms is taking all this interaction in the virtual world into the real world. I mean, we we met through Twitter. I'm here in the studio now, and I do that dozens of times a week. You know, meet real people, fascinating, interesting people who I've networked with on social media, sometimes for weeks, years. Wow. And uh, when you finally meet in the real world, it's like your uh, best friends, you know. You ever, know each other. Have you ever been disappointed? Actually, rarely. Most people are way more interesting than their social profile. So, you know, most people are pretty good. And despite all the negativity and hate and nonsense, when you meet people in the real world, you know, the number of uh, of jerks is, is pretty low in my my uh, my uh, experience. And let's talk a little bit about organic reach. How how would you define that? Well, I don't know if there is a single definition. You, you know, reach is all about the algorithm and how that algorithm shares your content across the platform. And depending on the algorithm on each platform, your reach can be a lot or a little. And so it's a function of a lot of factors. And it's frankly, it's, it's um, not very opaque into what real reach means, what the definition of an impression is, uh, what the value is, how many people are actually consuming or, or viewing that content. That's part of the problem of this whole social digital world is measurement and analysis and analytics. Um, but the key to reach is engagement, you know, getting people to engage with your content. That might mean sharing, commenting, liking, responding. Uh, it, it could be, you know, increasingly paid uh, dollars go behind reach. So right. A post that might look like it's popular might have uh, money behind it to extend its reach. So all of this has implications, not just in our world, business and tech, but in politics <laughs> and other things. So it's really hard to define. I, I just focus on engagement. If you can really, if you see a lot of posts with comments and replies and 
And that means people are really looking at it, and the algorithms now tend to, sh- to favor content that has that kind of engagement. Is there a particular hook that works? Like, you know, maybe it's a question where people have to respond to. Like, you know, we were just walking around the studios here, and we have Jeremy, and everybody in the building loves to go see Jeremy at least once a day because he always has, like, this weird question. Like, <laughs> you know, like, would you rather be stuck in a jail cell with a zombie or a werewolf? That was a recent one. Everyone knows the answer is zombie. I mean, zombies are much slower than werewolves. Oh, see, I said werewolf. I don't know why. (laughs) You haven't seen werewolves in London. so That's that's probably it. And so is it it a question or is there a particular angle? It's something that's um, frankly not, not focused on yourself. I mean, a lot of people make the mistake of focusing their social or digital on themselves all the time. It's all about their, what they're eating, what they're doing their point of view, their perspective. I find if I make social about other people, other people's news, other people's accomplishments, content, that that's the the first thing. The other thing is, right, engagement, asking questions, uh, doing a poll, a tagging or asking other people for their opinion. People like that. They like to participate versus just necessarily consume. But the Kardashian effect is directly opposite of that. We can't all be Kardashians, right? I mean, the the Kardashians are the 1% of the 1%. Um, you, you know, the vast majority of people, uh, you, you know, will never be a Kardashian. And so the the tactics that work for them. I don't are, think I'd want the butt. No, no, I, I think I would concur there. But the the tactics that work for a, a star, uh, a megastar, are not going to work for your average Joe. And so you have to look at a different approach. Of course, you can keep up to date with the latest breaking tech news 24-7 security alerts, data breaches, and much more digital know-how with the free Commando newsletters. Get yours at commando.com. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O. And on the top, click on newsletters. You're listening to Kim's conversation with social media influencer Evan Kerstel. And just ahead, they take a look at the top three things you need to do to promote your business or brand on social media. And later on, Facebook, Reddit, and the future of clickbait. Commando listeners know technology moves so fast, it's almost impossible to keep up with everything that's going on. That's why we have Commando On Demand. It's our way of keeping you informed and on the cutting edge of technology. Today, it's about social media. And back to Kim's conversation with social media expert, Evan Kerstel. And so when you look at and you help people build their social media influence, that factor, what's your first bit of advice? It's content. I mean, it really is content and everyone can be a content creator. People have this very uh, a super notion of what a piece of content is. It could be something as, as, as little as a thought, a paragraph. It could be pictures. It could be a video. It could be, um, you know, images. I mean, content could be just documenting the world around you and what you're doing and your interests so you can sort of identify with like-minded people. And I think that's what people forget. Content doesn't have to be writing a book. You know, it uh, can be much more lightweight. Yeah. And also curation. I mean, I'm curating content. You're, you're curating news and insights and uh, industry analysis. So I'm always curating. And that sort of attracts the audience based on what you curate. Oh, because, you know, I just find there are just so many different outlets. I mean, I looked at how many different places I go every single day to see what's going on in the world and I actually counted it. It's 32. I'm like, whoa, it's and we crazy. Need, we need more editors. We need more curators like you. So I trust you. I would trust your 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 shares and I would follow you and what you're you're sharing as a as an information source. So it really is about following credible sources or at least what you view are credible. And then, um, uh, you, you know, going through to the original source. So now, so we have content. What would be next? Um, I, I think it's communication and um, engagement. I mean, if you have a group of favorite followers, uh, including yourself, you know, comment and reply and engage. It's amazing how many people will, even at the very senior level, be watching. I mean, I've had Twitter conversations with Mark Andreessen and Michael Dell. <laughs> and again, very, very lightweight, very, very, you know, very basic stuff. But you'd be amazed who's actually on social themselves, personally consuming and listening and watching. 
And it's a chance for that one-to-one uh, correspondence that you just wouldn't get on any other platform. I, I know that there's a fair number of our listeners right now who probably have never heard of Reddit. Uh, there's one subreddit that I really like. It's called This Is Not The Onion. <laughs> oh, that's funny. There's, Reddit's great. I mean, Reddit is the third largest website in the world now, and most people haven't heard of it, um, largely because of the demographic. It's also a global site. And it's sort of it's sort of crept up upon us, but my favorite Reddit uh, form is Futurology. It's all about the future and sort of futurist and futurism. Amazing stuff gets shared there, and and you wouldn't find anywhere else. Where Reddit technology has you know tens of millions of members who are engaged in discussions on technology. So, how would you approach getting involved with Reddit on a social media, say, marketing digital platform? Well, there's two. There's uh, sides. There's the organic side, uh, and then there's the paid side. If if you're a, a company looking to advertise, you can do it on Reddit, and it's actually very underpriced. If you were a, a person interested in organic engagement, you can share content there. You can comment and upvote and downvote uh, content, and you build up a profile on Reddit, much like you would on Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook. And so it's about participating in the community there. Do you get any any heat if you start turning into a commercial? You know, as long as it's genuine and as long as it's, uh, you know, based on uh, it's disclosed, you know, uh, disclosure, I think I don't. No, I, I, I'm pretty clear who my clients are and I'm out there engaging and participating in, in on social with them. And you know, the key is adding value. You, you know, it's fine to put an ad out. But do you have a point of view? Do you have a perspective on the product? Do you use it? You, Correct, you know, because there yeah. are a lot of products I love, I, and I love to uh, represent them. Now, how does Instagram fall into all this? Well, it's funny. It's evolving. Um, Instagram, you know, traditionally was the uh, the food, yeah, and uh, and the beautiful people, the food porn, the beautiful people, the beautiful <laughs> pictures, and there's still a lot of that. But the demographic of this 16 to 25 year old, they're they're growing up. And Instagram is sort of maturing. So there are a lot of more brands. There's there's more engagement. I mean, Instagram is twice as big as as Twitter has several times more engagement. And so it's a community and you can't ignore it. 600 million people a month uh, <laughs> engaging on Instagram based on certain hashtags and keywords. And so uh, there's there's something for everyone there. You just kind of have to find it. And could you imagine the presidential election, say, 20 years from now, when they pull up whoever's running their old Instagram account? <laughs> well, it's kind of sad. Uh, you know, there's no escaping your, your digital footprint now. And I, I feel bad for kids who are going to have to be held accountable for a lot of stuff that we all said and did as, as kids. That oh, I know. I, I'm so happy we didn't have like Snapchat, <laughs> Instagram, Twitter when I was growing up. It would have been a different world. Exactly. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Facebook. You know, we, we, as I explained to you, we were just walking around, you know, I was showing you around the, the studios here is that, you know, I've never been that person who got on the air and said, join me on Facebook, you know, and I always thought it was kind of stupid that you would direct your entire audience over to another platform. And now, you know, we're, we are on Facebook and we've got, I don't know how many, 300 odd thousand followers or and I have to say, I, I do not personally go on Facebook. I found it to be a complete time energy suck. And I don't really manage the, the show Facebook account anymore because I don't even go on the platform. But it's interesting to me that when it first launched is that we would put up a post on Facebook and we, it was like crack cocaine. I mean, we would get like 20,000 people directly to the website that nanosecond. And now I can show you the Google Analytics. We have something up on Facebook. It can give us like 100 people unless we pay to boost the post, which is just irks me. Well, that's been the monetization strategy at Facebook is giving preference to paid content at the expense of organic content or reach. And that's been why they've been so successful and why advertising on Facebook is such a killer because it works. Um, but that does nothing for the rest of us who aren't really interested in in paying for Facebook ads. The, the, the challenge is Facebook reaches uh, what two billion plus crazy people, and so it's 
if you're a marketeer or you're a business and advertise, you just can't ignore it. And so you really have to fall into that trap of, of paying Facebook for, for advertising dollars. Well, you know what? We tried it. It didn't really do much for us. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that it, it's, it can be very targeted. I mean, if you're a, a dentist in, in Arizona, you should be running Facebook exactly. ads to find clients or if you're a, you know, you know pick, your, pick your small business category. But it's not for everyone. And you might find other platforms equally just don't work. So it really is finding the right platform, the right audience. So do you think, because now Facebook owns Instagram, that they'll be changing those algorithms too? They're constantly changing. I mean, that's the thing we we don't really see from the outside in. They're tweaking these algorithms daily to to make them more addictive and more useful for, for them and maybe for us. You know, whether it's YouTube or Facebook or any any of these platforms are constantly being tweaked and toyed with. And um, it's only through a kind of experimentation that you realize what the, the tuning is doing. So that's why as a, as a marketeer, it's really important to be hands on and, and constantly learning and watching and and shifting where you put your attention. What's the best way to figure out these algorithms? You know, it, it really is, uh, you know, watching what some thought leaders and industry pundits and and folks are doing. There's a lot of content there on the marketing front on what's working and best practices. And, and frankly, but frankly, it's doing, it's, it's getting in there, getting your hands dirty and, and practicing and trial and error and seeing what works and doesn't work. And there's no substitute for that, that kind of firsthand experience. I often take calls on the show from people who are trying to figure out how to expand their business. Like for example, last weekend, Really nice guy called in. Nice guy from New York. He was an exterminator, a pest exterminator. Mm -hmm. Okay, not one of the big franchises, homegrown, owned this place for 20 years, and is noticing that his business is dwindling. Uh, He said he didn't know anything about SEO, didn't want to know about SEO, doesn't have a social media presence. I own an exterminating company in Queens, New York, and I'm looking to uh, obviously get traffic which equates to sales. Right. I'm uh, 58. Uh, basically, uh, my business was run and still is run by word of mouth, family, friends, believe it or not, print ads, flyers, etc. And I'm looking to obviously uh, enter into the digital world, but uh, I don't know which way to go. I don't know if there's uh, an SEO scenario that possibly still active or it's an old app. Uh, I heard Facebook ads, Google ads. There's all kinds of but things, aren't again, there? There's quite a few things out there, and I said I'm, I'm clueless as far as uh, technology, and that's why I, I gave you a call today to see if you can at least give some advice or suggestion and a way for me to go to obviously build the business and bring in some more dollars. Because, that's yes, because, you know, it's always easy to resell a current customer than go find a new one, right? <laughs> okay, so, yes, absolutely right. Okay, so let's talk about finding new customers for an exterminator business. That A lot of this advice goes for any type of business that you have, by the way. And But here's a guy who's owned a business for 20 years. And is finding that his business is dwindling because he's not doing any type of digital marketing. Well, his business is dwindling because his competitor down the street is using digital marketing. Everyone needs pest control. I think that's universal and that's not going away. But his competitor is probably putting together a scary bug video and targeting women from 30 to 55 on Facebook in eight different zip codes. You see a scary bug video pop up when they're on Facebook click and and sign up as a customer and that's a really simple tactic that he's just um for for you know for worse in this case ignoring what are some other simple tactics that people can do you know there's uh, the, there's there's not one silver bullet there's there's just like 55 things you can be doing on social media to be more effective i'd say for me it's always using imaging you know imaging or videos i mean people are just visual and and they want to see and they want to f- feel uh, something in the post. So interesting imagery. It almost doesn't matter what it is. It's almost just to have some imaging and ideally a video, uh, whether it's of you, whether it's someone, you know, shooting you, whether you're shooting something on your smartphone, just to have that, that visual impact is really important. And experimenting. I mean, one copy might work and you might try it and, you know, try something else and it might be 10x just based on using certain hashtags, maybe certain keywords struck a nerve. And so it really is, you know, sort of trial and error to find out what works. And and also, you know, people don't realize any post only gets one or two, three percent engagement. 
So when I do a blog or a post, I'll share that same post in different ways over different days, different times of the day, different days of the week, you know, with different copy and imagery uh, to, to have a maximum impact. It's, you know, social is very busy and very noisy. It's not like a fire and forget, one and done kind of thing. Hey, don't forget, you can Google anything and watch YouTube videos from, you know, who knows who. But to get the real researched answers, tap on our community message board. Dedicated Commando Show staffers and pro community members will help you one-on-one with step-by-step instructions and links you know won't lead to hackers and scammers. Find out more about the Commando community at getkim.com. That's getkim.com. More of Kim's conversation with social media influencer Evan Kirstel is still to come, including clickbait and how it's changing. And they'll share some thoughts on smart cars and smart homes in moments. It's Commando On Demand and a special bonus. We're releasing uh, an hour of the Kim Commando show on the next version of Commando On Demand. Look for that very soon. Uh, That hour is going to include some big news for BlackBerry, Tesla's hidden feature that you absolutely shouldn't use, and harsh alarm clocks and how they could make you actually be more sleepy than you are when you wake up in the morning. That's on the Commando On Demand podcast, a special hour of the Kim Commando Show. Look for that very soon. And now, back to Kim's conversation with Evan Kerstel on Commando On Demand. You know, so many years, it seems like, that we were living in the clickbait genre. We still are. (laughs) It seems to get not so much anymore, though. Like, you know, six ways that you need to know to make sure that your lover is going to stay with you forever, you know, or whatever it may be. Um, You know, we're a little guilty of that. I know. You look at the headlines. But we're also noticing when we're doing some A-B testing that... People are now looking for, instead of six ways to know if the hackers are getting you, is to say, this data breach happened five years ago. Now you're being targeted. Are you seeing that as well? Yeah, there's there's lots of new tactics being deployed and marketeers are kind of realizing some of the old stuff is getting long in the tooth and we need to try something new. Uh, so I, I, I see a lot of that. And um you know, it really is tying your content into context, you know, trends. Like you said, I mean, people are obsessed with personal security, safety these days. So how can you tie, you know, your, your product solution, your service, your app into those, those, those trends. Now for, for, for that sort of a positive spin, the negative spin are people, are people are using these trends to sort of to, to generate clicks, you know, coronavirus hashtag is now in every post people are doing, you know, Instagram influencers are using it to, to ride on top of the, the, this, this terrible news. And so there's a lot of hijacking of (laughs) topics and themes, and that might be the new clickbait. So what are some future trends that you see? I think for me, it's it's spatial computing. I mean, we're, we've been talking about VR and, and experimenting for some time, and you know, it's going to happen in many ways. But but I think once Apple releases its first augmented reality hit, whether it's glasses or some kind of wearable, it's really going to enter the mainstream, and we'll see the, a world of of sort of um, mixed reality, multi modes of communication with smart glasses enter the fray. And we'll start maybe using our smartphone less and using these wearables, whether it's VR goggles or augmented reality glasses, to communicate and collaborate and message and navigate the world and consume content. So I think it's going to take a big blockbuster breakthrough from the likes of an Apple to really uh, push that forward. But I think it's coming in the next year. Well, I think we need 5G for that. And 5G, we're the nation stages, and so the networks will come together, and hopefully we'll have cool devices like Apple eyeglasses to uh, to use 5G on. That'd be pretty awesome. I just want my iPhone to do 5G. <laughs> okay. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, but definitely the next round, we'll see some Qualcomm chips lined up, and we'll have blazing fast 5G, which is, uh, for both of us, is going to be uh, 
fabulous. I know. I'm such a geek. <laughs> Sometimes I finally I, met my my, uh, <laughs> my my you know nemesis here. This is like we're you know kindred spirits. On side, so. I know. Sometimes I look at this stuff and I get all excited. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay, just back off. <laughs> just back down just a little bit. I'm really excited about car technology, though, too. And what's going on? I mean, you know, the other day I was um, backing out of the a driveway and I, my mother lives in our guest house. And so I was coming from the guest house and I had to go to the gate. And my husband was in the passenger seat and I have a G-Wagon. Okay. And so I have a 360 degree camera. Nice. That's right in the street in the middle. And I didn't even notice it until Barry said to me, I was backing out. I didn't even look at the mirrors. I was backing out around the corner and then going through the gate by just looking at the screen. And he said to me, do you not even look at the mirrors? And I didn't realize that's how I'm driving now. Yeah, it's really changing driving um, and it's changing driving habits. I mean, Tesla is leading the way in many ways. But yesterday, Cadillac's new Escalade will have... Oh, that screen's amazing. Yeah, this fantastic user experience and really hands-free driving, foot feet, no, no gas pedals on highways uh, next year. What, what, you know, with Arizona highways going into infinity, what, what a great way to get across <laughs> the state. Right? Yeah, right. All the way to California. <laughs> Go through those stretches. Absolutely. And the, so I think fully autonomous... They call level five autonomous yes. without the steering wheel is is a little ways off. But these new modes of driving, you know, assisted driving are here. Would you trust a Tesla on full automatic drive? You, you know, I haven't experienced I've, I, it personally. I've seen people who have. And, um, you know, honestly, I trust myself less a lot more and more. You think about an aging population. We're all getting a little older and grayer. We're, we're getting less, con, you know, confident driving. I'm excited about the opportunities it enables for older drivers. I mean, do you, do you trust your, you know, 95 year old aunt, or do you trust, you know, a Tesla uh, automated vehicle? So, you know, that's actually a good point. That's an excellent point because today, in about well, she's probably in the car now. So I'd be careful if you were driving down Camelback. Is my mother? Okay, she uh, turns 81 in a few weeks. Nice. Okay. She had, was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer three years ago. Wow. And the Mayo Clinic told me to take her home. I've told this story on the air and just let her finish out her bucket list. And I looked at the chief oncologist and I said, you know, the problem is, is that my mother was one of the developers of the Unix operating system. No kidding. She developed the first video phone. And I don't know if you remember, used to call 411. Okay. She was the head system analyst on that. Well, Bell Labs and Bell AT&T, Labs, right, right there in AT and T, and that's how I got into all this because being the only woman on the team at that time, she was not. They actually told her in the interview, "Okay, we know that you have four kids. You're not going to be sick, are you? Or have to take care of your sick kids?" Oh my gosh! Because okay, they used to be able to do that then. So when I was sick, I would go to Bell Labs with her. And so it, they were, they would have me play like Hunt the Wumpus and they would say, you know, can you move this disc and do it? You know, when this punch card stops, just keep putting the cards in. Oh, that's so great. Okay. So, and I just thought like that was like, you know, what people did. And then she would bring home these terminals that were on the acoustic coupler modems. And for those of you who don't know what those are, you can look it up on Wikipedia. Kids, ask your mom and dad. But it was that you take the handset from the phone and put it right in the computer. Okay. Well, what that meant is my sisters couldn't get calls from their boyfriends. <laughs> okay. But I was playing video games that Pong or whatever they had going on. And so back to my mom. So when he says, you know, complete the bucket list, I said, you know, I said, she's been to a, she has, she's been to 143 countries. That's such a great story. Okay. I, I don't know what else to tell her. Yeah. And so I, I said to my mom, oh, you know, what do you want to do? She says, well, I have stage four pancreatic cancer. What am I supposed to do? I said, well, you're either going to fight or die. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. And she's lived with me for 25 years, by the way. Oh, wonderful. And so uh, we have a very close relationship. And she said, well, I, I think I want to fight it. So I took her over to MD Anderson uh, in Houston. 
and we were flying back and forth. And, you know, fortunately, I had the means to fly her privately. And so she could go there for treatment and come back and, you know, go back and forth. And uh, where I can knock on wood here is that there's some wood is that she uh, she went to the Mayo Clinic yesterday because that's her primary when she's in Phoenix. And mm-hmm. Uh, they they diagnosed her as cancer free. Oh my gosh, that is such a great story. And so so happy for you. Thank you. I mean, it was a hard road. I mean, everybody. I really had I had a lot of champions here in the studio because there were times when people would walk in my office and I was crying, and you know, and there were day, there was some weeks I just couldn't be here, and uh, there were some days I'd come in to do a show and I would be emotionally drained, you know, just because I. I, you know, every time somebody gets cancer, the the family goes through it, but I was the primary caregiver. So it was, you know, it was really hard, but we all kind of banded together. But anyway, back to her driving. So it was probably about six months ago. She says, you know, I, I think I'm ready to drive again. Mm. And I had bought her when she turned 70, I bought her a Mercedes. And uh, so she got back in the car and it was a little rough. In the beginning, it was a little tough, but today she's driving herself to the dentist. Nice. And uh, she went, I had her take some driving classes and had the instructor deem her safe. But how nice would it be now that you've just given me an idea <laughs> to get her a Tesla and say, here, go. Well, that and, and also technologies in the home. I mean, people make fun of all the home gadgets and smart home gift stuff, but I think aging in place and staying home and while being safe and secure and monitored with remote electronic care and even telemedicine, telehealth. Which is phenomenal. I mean, these are technologies that are real and they're maturing and we're going to have it in many places the next one to five years that will have a real impact on all of us. Well, you know, how she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer is that she, I called her on the way home from work just to say hi, you know. And talked to you all day. And she said, uh, she said, you know, I, I think I need you to take me to the emergency room. And I said, you know, what's up? She said, I fell. I said, what do you mean you fell? She said, I fell at about two o'clock in the morning, but I didn't want to wake you up. But I, I think I may have broken my hip or something. Oh, no. And so then I started thinking, you know, why didn't I have something in her home, right, that, that she could have contacted me with? So now she's got Nest cameras and I've got her set up with an accelerometer. She's got, uh, I have uh, the Apple uh, HomePod speaker there. Right. So in the guest house at any time I taught her, say, you know, hey, Siri, call Kim. And oops, there goes my, it does work. Which Everyone, phone number for Kim Commander? And you just activated 6 million phones around the country as well. <laughs> you know, I do that on the show. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> oh, it just totally ticks people off. I'll say, you know, sometimes you should just say, hey, Alexa, play the Kim Commando show. And then people are like, no, stop, stop. That's called a marketing hack. I guess. <laughs> Anything else? No, I just say it's wonderful to be here. Your studios are fabulous. Uh, the real life behind the scenes tour is, is a super impressive. And I can't wait to be back. Anytime, Evan. Thanks for coming down. Thanks so much. If you'd like to know more about Evan Kirstel, you can find him at evankirstel.com. That's E-V-A-N-K-I-R-S-T-E-L.com. If you know a business owner who would benefit from this podcast, please go ahead and share it. And if you haven't already, you can get this podcast delivered automatically to your device every week. Just hit that subscribe button. And thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. your passion into a business with Shopify and break sales records with the world's best converting checkout. Let's hear that one more time. The world's best converting checkout. Shopify's legendary checkout makes it easier for customers to shop on your website, across social media, and everywhere in between. Now that's music to your ears. Any way you spin it, you can be a smash hit with Shopify. Start your dollar a month trial today at shopify.com slash records.